And I, and I personally do not accept that, that human nature is selfishness or greediness. I, I do not accept these things because ultimately we have to ask ourselves, like, where do these, where do these traits come from? And, and that's, that's the thing that, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses or religion in general can't really explain. It cannot explain where do those uh, uh, character traits and those ideas come from. And Marxism says that there is a material basis for those ideas, that ideas are formed by both the material and the social conditions in which we live in. And so I think you're completely right. If you have a system that rewards people for being greedy, for being selfish, then you create selfish and greedy humans. So to, to change that about ourselves and about our society, we need to change again, the system that is at the core of this. Welcome to the JB Font channel. So good to have you finally. Hello. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to be here and to be talking with you about such important news as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. One of my first questions to you, actually, uh, Zavi, is yeah. how did you get to where you are politically and socially? Where did it start? And what was the main driver to you? Was it similar to a lot of people within the last, I say, six, seven years or so? Or if you can give us a rundown there. Yeah, so I was born uh, as a, a regular person <laughs> in California uh, mm -hmm. to two parents who were Jehovah's Witnesses. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Um, I didn't leave being a Jehovah's Witness until about 2019, and okay. that's kind of when my political journey started. Um, when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I, I would still kind of sort of keep up with politics. I would describe myself as a bit of a shit lib at that time. Um, I, I would watch uh, Jon Stewart and like uh, uh, John Oliver and think that these people made sense. Um, <laughs> and I think the, the pandemic really uh, had the effect of radicalizing me, uh, because I, I was, I was a big fan of Bernie in 2020. I saw how the democratic party, uh, rigged that primary against him. Um, you know, he ended up capitulating to the Democrats and telling all of his base to vote for the, for the Democrats. I yeah. personally did not accept that. I ended up voting green, uh, that year. And so that's kind of where it all started. You know, I, I think that that Bernie um, said things that made sense to me at the time. And then later, you know, I, I realized that um, that that's kind of the, the whole issue, the whole issue of our society. And the reason why things are the way that they are is is this fundamental uh, socioeconomic system that is called capitalism and that that that's at the core of why our politics are the way that we are, that they are, the way, why our society is the way that it is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of been a, an ongoing learning, um, learning journey for me. Mm. Yeah, so like me, you grew up Jehovah's Witness. I was uh, a baptized Jehovah's Witness from, uh, from January of 1998 until Gosh, it had to be like seven years ago. Yeah. So yeah, about yeah. 2014, I'm sorry, uh, 2016 ish, 2017. Okay. So, yeah. so I, I, I definitely know about that. Um, one of my questions though, is how do you square the beliefs that you were taught as a Jehovah's witness in the beginning? How do you square that circle with what you believe now? Is there any type of overlap or congruency in there? I, I think that there's an overlap just because, you know, I, now I, I would consider myself a communist. I'm, I'm someone who um, has tried to read a lot of the science of Marxism, um, both Marx, you know, Lenin, uh, uh, other figures that, that were prominent uh, within, within Marxism. And I do think that they, that they somewhat align in the sense that, you know, Marx, Marx said that religion is the opiate of the people. Um, and, and what he meant by that is that like religion is this thing that comes and tries to soothe 
the pain that we all kind of feel in this in in society being part of capitalism and so i i that's the way that i view it you know i think a lot of a lot of the teachings of jehovah's witnesses are because they sense this very real uh wrongness with our society you know there's there's something wrong obviously when when our neighbors are being criminalized for having to sleep on the street for example there, there's yeah. something wrong when we produce enough food to feed way more than the the people that actually inhabit the planet and yet there are people who go hungry there's something wrong when for example we're seeing the the genocide that is happening uh uh in gaza and yeah. the government doesn't move or or anybody in power doesn't move to stop this this is the pain that everyone can feel and i think religion taps into that pain and tries to give religion as the as the kind of solution for these issues you know it's interesting also a lot of people don't know this but there are jehovah's witnesses in gaza there right? are jehovah's witnesses in, yes. in the west bank and yes. the, the jehovah's witnesses in gaza and the west bank actually have solidarity with the jehovah's witnesses in israel right. because they all see each other as the same so it's kind of it's kind of interesting and part of me is like Well, if you're a witness and you're in Israel, if you don't understand that this is a set of colonial project, I think it would be time for you to, you know, exit stage left out of that area <laughs> and give them no. back their land. But that's a no. whole nother conversation because someone just don't realize that capitalism is one of the biggest issues that we have. Yeah. Because yes. they think that God's going to come in and fix it all. But yes. with yes. that being said, you know, uh, one of the things that I also wanted to ask you was about you diving into this this space, this independent media space. Why did you want to lend your voice to this space? And what type of contributions did you feel that you can, you know, give to this space that others may be missing? Yeah, I I think I moved into this because I, uh, I, I had things that I wanted to talk about that were regarding politics and again, You know, I'm very interested in politics, in culture, in technology. I, I was a tech worker for more than 10 years. I was a web developer. Um, and I've seen a lot of the effects of capitalism in the tech space and how that's affected tech workers. Um, and so I wanted to I wanted to talk about that. I also think, you know, one of the big reasons why I, I want to be more outspoken is because, again, I am a communist and I believe that the, the core of the issue and and the root uh the root issue of our society's ills is capitalism um and i i don't think that there are a ton <laughs> of people necessarily that are saying that all the time that that can link uh the issues that we see on a day-to-day -day basis with the issues of capitalism you know again you you look at a situation like the the genocide in gaza that is directly related to capital that is directly related to u.s imperialism and u.s's and the u.s's support of its imperialist projects and so uh, that's that's something that i really want to uh get out there and say and 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 try to raise consciousness among other people about Th this this huge problem a and and the fact that we need to accept that we need to overthrow capitalism if we're going to have a better society yeah that's actually a really great point because a lot of times people people in, in kind of just opposing that with what you said earlier about how you know when we were jehovah's witnesses we also knew that there was something wrong And we would always yes. call it this system of things, right? <laughs> you know, we always yes. call it, about, you know, this system of things that's, you know, being, you know, uh, being thwarted or influenced by Satan, the devil, right? Right. But right. really, we just now switched it. We were like, wait, it's not some spiritual entity. It's actually capitalism that's actually yes. the influence of this system of things, right? And how it it really just forces it. It, it allows for a system for the grotesques of human nature to run amok. Mm. The system, uh, like for instance, selfishness and, uh, you know, self-interest. Uh, it's just like, um, it said, uh, what was, what was it? Uh, critical, um, 
Critical times, hard to deal, be here. Men will be lovers of themselves, self-assuming, <laughs> haughty, blasphemers, disobedience of parents, unthankful, right, disloyal, right. and having no natural affection, not open to any agreement, slanders without self-control, fear without love of goodness, head, uh, betrayers, headstrong, uh, puffed up with pride, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having the fear of God and devotion, but proving false to his power and from these turn away. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Wow. But, but the thing is, it's like, that the issue is, is that that is all those things that's encapsulated that I forget that particular chapter, book, chapter and verse is in. But that really encapsulates the values that are in capitalism. Right. Right. And the thing is, it's like people go, well, that's just human nature. That's just how we are. And it's yeah. like, OK, well, if you know that that's what human nature is, then why not develop and encourage a system that deviates from it? Mm. Right, because everybody's like, "Well, that's just human nature." All right, then we should have a human. Uh, 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 but the thing is, kindness, compassion, um, love, and you know, care—all those are also part of human nature. So why not just put in a system that uplifts that instead of the bad parts of human nature? But the right. thing is that like, a lot of people they don't want to, or they're too scared to because they're afraid of the people who have all these resources that exploited us that are going to uh, you know, destroy us if we try to. But the thing is that we don't realize that we have strength in numbers. There is more of us than there are of them. Mm-hmm. And so it right. just goes to show that when you think about it, ultimately the future's in the hands of the many and the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. That was from Spock. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. so I just, it's just you know, wild to me, but yeah. And I, and I personally do not accept that, that human nature is selfishness or greediness. I, I do not accept these things because okay. ultimately we have to ask ourselves, like, where do these, where do these traits come from? And, and that's, that's the thing that, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses or religion in general can't really explain. It cannot explain where do those uh, uh, character traits and those ideas come from. And Marxism says that there is a material basis for those ideas, that ideas are formed by both the material and the social conditions in which we live in. And so I think you're completely right. If you have a system that rewards people for being greedy, for being selfish, then you create selfish and greedy humans. So to to change that about ourselves and about our society, we need to change, again, the system that is at the core of this. Yeah, definitely. And so another question I have I wanted to ask you about before we get into our our next segment is what do you see is one of the missteps of the left? And when I say the left, I'm talking about the, the, the left in the West, the left, particularly in the United States. What do you see is some of the missteps and how we can actually circumvent that in order to achieve pushing for more class solidarity, more worker solidarity, more community building? What do you feel is the best way to access that? So first, what is the issue that you see the most and how do we go about going, you know, getting over that? Yeah, I mean, I think that we're going to get into a little bit more of this when we talk about like Kamala Harris and this yeah. pick for Tim Walz, because I think it it perfectly illustrates the issue with the left. And I would say that the biggest issue on the left is that they do not recognize capitalism as the main issue and as the main problem to fight against. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and because of that, that causes mistake after mistake after mistake. You know, the the left has been trying to get the Democratic Party to uh, make progress, right, to improve the lives of regular people, has been trying supposedly to push these politicians left. But they mm-hmm. constantly aren't able to, and the and and the the root of that of that reason is again that you have two capitalist parties. It it yeah. is it is, you know, to to make a proper analysis on our politics, and and I think to move forward, 
We have to understand that the Republican and the Democratic Party represents the interests of the ruling class. If we cannot understand that, then people will continue to pour resources into Democratic, you know, uh, uh, candidates, into, yeah. you know, into the Democratic Party, into maybe the Republican Party as well. And so I think, yeah. to me, that is the main that is the main issue. If we are going to move on, and we are actually going to, to uh, uh, strengthen the worker movement, if we are actually going to make progress, we need to accept that these two parties are capitalist parties and there is no fixing them. We need to abandon them. Of course, of course. Thank you very much. I just want to address a comment really quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody already corrected them already, but uh, Surfing to the Max says, the Bible says the money is the root of all evil. In Apostle Paul's letter to Timothy, he said, the love of money is the root of all sorts of injurious things. And by reaching out for that love, some have been led straight from the faith and have stabbed themselves all over many pains. That was from Tim Paul's letter to Timothy. And so that is what it says in the Bible. And then Ryder in the Black says, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, greed, not money itself. So yes. So Paul said the love of money is the root of all sorts of injurious things or the root of all evil. So just to let you know, the thing is, is that if you love money, then guess what? Money is also another word for what? Capital. That being <laughs> said, if you're loving the capital and if you want the capital more than anything else, then guess what? You're going to exploit other people to get it because that's what you're buying for. That's what you're itching for. That's what you're jonesing for because that's what you need, right? Um, and then Jimmy says humans are both capitalists and communists, but domination and submission define us too. Uh, no, because capitalism is actually a system by means of which either one or a small group of people actually own the means of production over other people and use their exploitation of capital in order to make more and to give less to the people who are working for them. That is not necessarily inherently human. And in fact, if that's the case, then we would have seen capitalism 500, 600, 700, 800 years ago before pre-colonial times, especially in indigenous cultures like here in the Americas, a.k.a. Turtle Island, or as well as in Africa. But we didn't. We saw gift economies, which basically is a I got you next economy. Basically, mm -hmm. if we saw somebody without, we gave it to them. And then if that person, you know, once that person got up on their feet and things were going good, then they would give to us. And then we get them next time. So the thing is, is that capitalism in itself is not actually inherent to human nature. I would actually argue that capitalism is an anathema to human nature, right? Uh, versus communism, the root word in communism is community, really. So really, ultimately, communists are actually trying to take us back to the way we were when we were indigenous here in the Americas, here in Africa. So when communists say make America great again, we're talking about going back to before Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. <laughs> See what I mean? So that, that's, that's the overall picture. So just wanted to address that because a lot of times people will say, well, capitalism is inherent in, in, in human nature. No, it's not. And then the ability to buy and sell is not capitalism, it's commerce. Commerce is the word you're looking for. Right. Buying and selling, owning the means of production, and then extracting that wealth from labor, and you're extracting more wealth from the labor than what they then you know uh, than what you give them. That ultimately is capitalism, right. and you're basically exploiting them in order to make more. So yep. that's it. Um, anything anything you wanted to add before I move on? <laughs> no, I, I think you did a pretty good job, yeah. All right. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, You'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and 
have a beautiful day.